This NBA player, who learned life on the streets, made it to the NBA by proving himself in basketball at a time when gang violence was at its height. Living with the risk of being killed every day, he lost relatives and friends to gang wars. But DeMar DeRozan fought for his life despite these hardships. Even the gangs respected his unique basketball game, and they even called him Debo. Here is DeMar DeRozan's life, perhaps one of the most unique in the NBA. DeMar DeRozan was born on August 7, 1989 in Compton, California. At the time of DeRozan's birth, this city had the highest crime rate in California. California. The reason was that gangs were divided in this area. Gangs were divided into Crips and Bloods. This place was so dangerous that in 10 years about 7,500 people were killed in gang wars. Among those killed were DeRozan's close friends and relatives. This is exactly why DeRozan started playing basketball. Because if you were born in Compton, you could either wrap your way out of it or you could play basketball. So you have two options. And DeRozan's father and uncle steered him towards basketball to keep him away from these dangerous streets. And DeRozan had an interest in basketball. DeRozan started going to the park every weekend with his father and uncle to play basketball. DeRozan was playing better and better every day because of his interest in basketball. On top of that, he was becoming famous for his talent on the courts of Compton until his uncle, whom he called his favorite and closest friend, died in a gang war. Learning of his uncle's passing was the shock of DeRozan's life. DeRozan, who was just coming of age, had lost his first relative. And to top it off, his uncle had been shot by the Bloods gang in defense of someone else. I've been to so many funerals, I lost count, DeRozan said. He thought that one day it would happen to him because of what was happening around him. So DeRozan had to develop tactics. He has to take safe streets on his way home from sports. He always looks behind him whenever he walks down the street. He does these things just to survive. But after a while, DeRozan got tired of running all the time. And to keep himself safe, he thought about getting involved with gangs, and he started getting involved with the Crips. And this is where DeRozan's real story begins. Once inside the Crips, DeRozan immediately made a scene with the Crips. At that time, the gangs knew how talented DeRozan was in basketball. The Crips even thought DeRozan could play in the NBA. That's why the Crips gang didn't get DeRozan involved in any bad business. They also ensured his safety. While all this was going on, DeRozan was making a name for himself in Compton. Every day, someone new knew DeRozan, and DeRozan knew someone knew. One day, two gang members saw DeRozan walking down the street and cut him off. When the young gang members realized it was DeRozan, they didn't mess with DeRozan because they knew what would happen to them if they touched him. Everyone believed that DeRozan would represent this city in the NBA in the future, so nobody could touch him. Nobody at all. Because of his uniqueness, everybody nicknamed him Debo. It means someone who bullies people in the neighborhood in the movie Friday, which is set in Compton. Now, you might say that DeRozan wasn't bullying people. Yes, that's true, but it's also right because DeRozan was bullying everybody at what he did best, which was basketball. There was no one he didn't crush on the court. He was crushing every opponent with his superior basketball play. It was because of his talent that DeRozan became even more popular and famous. By the time he was in high school, DeRozan was a household name, not only in Compton, but throughout California. Everyone respected DeRozan, and so DeRozan became more and more attached to his neighborhood. So, when he had the chance in high school to get out of Compton, he didn't. He wanted to play basketball at Compton in high school because of his love for the neighborhood, and most of the people who graduated from the high school he wanted to go to were either rappers or athletes. DeRozan started playing at his neighborhood high school of choice, and in his first year of high school, he averaged a phenomenal 26 points and became a household name, not only in California, but across the country. Even though he shone like a star in his first year, he was still walking the streets of Compton. DeRozan was playing better and better. He even averaged 30 points during his high school career. He was now one of the top high school basketball players, not only in Compton, but in the whole country, because he was voted the third best high school player in the country. DeRozan was playing so well, that he was getting special invitations to the biggest basketball events in the country. DeRozan became a god in his own neighborhood. But there's one thing to remember. Compton is still full of gangs, and DeRozan is actually alive because of basketball. Because his classmates at the high school he wanted to attend were getting fewer and fewer. And it wasn't because they transferred to another school. It wasn't because they got involved in gangs and got DeRozan even said something like, I lost a lot of people before I graduated high school. It really sucks. And DeRozan witnessed his best friend get killed high school because of gang activity. DeRozan said, I was afraid that if I talked to my friends anymore, I wouldn't be able to see them the next day because of gang activity. And in fact, what he feared always happened to him. Because DeRozan said, the friends I talked to wouldn't be in that classroom one day a week, not forever. At a young age, I used to think about why life is so cheap. As a special kid, you're just trying to make it through the day and then come home safe and sound. I've seen so much that I realized that anything can happen at any time, DeRozan said. Things were going up and down until suddenly DeRozan's 
father suddenly became ill. DeRozan's father, who was rushed to the hospital, was found to have suffered a stroke. DeRozan, who had already lost his uncle to gang wars, could not lose his father on top of that. When DeRozan and his father were in the hospital, DeRozan's father told him, I don't want to die without seeing you in the NBA. That's all his father really wanted, because he wanted DeRozan to succeed in what he was doing to save him from these gang wars, and he knew very well that his son was really good at basketball. So everything was up to DeRozan. DeRozan had a lot of pressure on him when he was young, but he handled it well. But there was one thing that gave DeRozan trouble, and that was the rules of the NBA. According to the rules, you had to have at least one year of college and be 19 years old to be eligible for the NBA draft. DeRozan couldn't go straight from high school to the NBA because of the old NBA rules. Not wanting to move away from Compton, DeRozan had to leave Compton to make it in the NBA because there were no universities in Compton at that time. DeRozan was coming out of Compton for the first time. It actually scared him a little bit because Compton protected him. So nothing could happen to DeRozan in Compton. But if he went to other areas, that's where there could be trouble. That's why DeRozan wanted to go to college in a safe place where there was no crime around him. And a few weeks later, DeRozan's college adventure began. Even in his first three months of college, he continued to live in Compton. DeRozan played 35 games in his first season in college. Everything was slowly going well. DeRozan was playing better and better. On top of that, he was settling in with his team and making friends in his college neighborhood. Until all of a sudden, his mother suffered a serious illness. The player, who had more or less overcome the stress of his father's illness, now started to stress about his mother's illness. On top of that, DeRozan, his mother and father, were in a very bad situation when it came to money. DeRozan had the stress of his mother's illness and the stress of his father saying, I want to see you in the NBA. In fact, the only way out was to make it to the NBA because if he made it to the NBA, he could take care of his mom with the money from the NBA and fulfill his dad's promise. And he did the first thing he had to do to achieve that success. He signed up for the NBA draft. The year was 2009, one of the best NBA drafts in history. The protagonists of the story are DeMar DeRozan, Stephen Curry, James Harden, Blake Griffin, and many others. Stephen Curry was selected seventh overall, James Harden third overall, Blake Griffin first overall, and DeRozan, the hero of the story, was picked ninth overall by the Toronto Raptors. Coming from almost the most dangerous street in America, DeRozan had only been out once for college. Now thanks to college basketball, he was going to make millions and introduce himself to the world. On top of that, DeRozan's father was able to see his success before he passed away. DeMar had indeed achieved his dreams. In the NBA, he used his jumping ability to become a standout, competing in dunk contests two years in a row. In 2014, he was named an All-Star for the first time. And now he was recognized as an NBA star. Just as Compton embraced him, Toronto fans embraced him. One by one, he started to break all the records of Vince Carter, one of the legends of Toronto at the time. Vince Carter held the record for the most points scored in the first quarter with 19. DeRozan broke that record by scoring 20 points in the first quarter. In 2016, he scored 72 points in the first two games of the season. This record was held by Vince Carter with 65 points, and DeRozan broke that record again as he always does. Breaking record after record, crushing his opponents without mercy, and constantly fighting for the top spot. DeRozan really has an incredible fighting spirit. Give yourself 30 seconds and really think about it. You're born in a dangerous place like Compton. You lose your own uncle when you're a kid, and not just your uncle, but most of your relatives and friends. Because of the risk of being every day, you're always looking behind you when you go out or when you go somewhere and you take safer and safer streets. On top of that, just when you are getting used to all this, suddenly your father and mother get diseases. And you're doing it in spite of all these things that I can't even count. DeRozan gave almost 10 years of his career to Toronto. But no matter how successful he was in his career, he never won an NBA championship. So, DeRozan left Toronto and was traded to the San Antonio Spurs. But this was not so welcomed. On top of that, this transfer was made without asking the owner of the Toronto Raptors. But there's nothing to do. Everyone had to get used to it. And that's what happened. But something was wrong. DeRozan couldn't get used to his new team, the Spurs. He couldn't fit in with his new team, and he was unhappy. On top of that, the Raptors, who hadn't won a championship in 10 years, won a championship after DeRozan left, and that made DeRozan even more pessimistic. The player was now questioning himself if he was the problem, and not only himself, but his fans were questioning it too. And despite all this pressure, DeRozan received the news that his father had passed away. DeRozan had become pessimistic over the 
he had seen throughout his life. He was really in the depths of depression. He's actually someone who helps people a lot because he was actually giving seminars to people about depression and he was talking about how to overcome depression. Of course, for such a person to be depressed, he had to go through something very bad. And DeRozan experienced this bad thing by losing his father. People said to DeRozan, why are you depressed? You have money, you're rich. And remember, there's no way wealth can buy someone's mental health. And that's where people were really unsympathetic to DeRozan. DeRozan slowly began to recover from an intensely depressive life. And after two seasons with his last team, the Spurs, he was traded to the Chicago Bulls. After two years with people who doubted him, he officially shone again in his new team. He became the 50th player to reach 20,000 points. He broke Jordan's record by scoring 35 points in six consecutive games. The record was previously held by Jordan in five consecutive games. He made last second shots that he hadn't made in his career. And he's really been able to bounce back for the Chicago Bulls. DeRozan was really starting to get his due after all these years. You just heard the story of a kid in Campton who started playing basketball just to not to a guy who went on to make it to the NBA. And I really thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks to your likes, I'm making the videos with more hope. Thank you again for watching.